Hey, Sash fans, Father's Day is approaching, so it's time to organize a gift for the old boy. This year, why not introduce him to the world of high-end car care with our sponsors, Waxit. Waxit stocks top car care brands from around the globe, not just the cheap stuff you can buy on the shelf. From starter cleaning kits to professional grade tools, help dad lift his car care game this Father's Day. For Sash listeners, you can get 10% off all of your purchases. Simply find the link in the episode description of this show or on any of our social media channels. Upgrade Dad's car care game today. Hep says farewell. Kelly kicks Hipwood. The boys don't get embarrassed. And well... That's a wrap for 2024. This is The Sash, definitely not the official podcast of the Essendon Football Club. I am your host, Rob, here with you for the final time, the final Monday review show for the 2024 season. And uh, I'm very happy to be joined in studio by James. Hello, mate. For the last time in 2024. Hello, Rob. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm... uh, I'm I'm very happy that this is the last Monday night. I've got to <laughs> roll into the studio and can get a bit more free time, and my emotions will be a bit more in check as they are. And um, yeah, I'm very happy about you. Yeah, similar. I think uh, listening to you and Joel on Thursday night, I think I recall you both saying that one of the only reasons you're watching the game is because you're on the pod, and I <laughs> fell into that same bracket. So here I am, and shout out to the faithful that are listening tonight because it's fair to say we packed up our season a little while ago. So mm. if you're uh, if you're listening, shout out to you, the Sash faithful. Yes, listeners and viewers. Um, you did mention Joel there. I think he's running a little bit late, but he has arrived here. Oh, yeah, Joel's coming in. Joel's coming in. Oh, no. Oh, no, Joel. Oh, no. Joel has tape over his mouth. And he's holding up a sign that says, cancel your memberships. (laughs) This is a protest. (laughs) It's like that, um, oh God, what was the show? Was it on Big Brother? Some guy did this. That's what it is. is, Wow, this is a reference to Big Brother. Um, I I mean, I'd ask you hello, but obviously you're not going to say anything. So Charles was holding up a sign that says, cancel your memberships. Okay, are you gonna are you gonna write notes? Oh, are you gonna write notes and then I'll I'll read them out. Okay, so he's got the pen and paper for the audio only. He's writing a word here. Um, what does that say? It's looking a lot like cancel. Cancel. <laughs> cancel. Cancel what? J- 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 cancel Jake Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> and he's holding that up as well. Um, this is the first. Uh, podcast i've ever done where there's been a live protest on it james this is this is unique for me not sure how the uh, audio listeners are going with the uh yeah. with the no visuals but uh those on youtube will be enjoying this i'm yeah. sure joel's now struggling to pour a water okay comes the tapes coming off tapes coming off it's a good thing you don't have a mustache or a beard because that i could that it hurt quite a bit this that's very light tape i was okay. like checking it at the office i was like yeah this won't hurt <laughs> Uh, yeah, for the, for behind the scenes, Joel was behind the curtain for five minutes there, and I had no idea what you were going to come out with. Um, I'm had, glad you got the Big bar- Brother reference. Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> I, was, I was, yeah, didn't know what to expect, but there you go. Mm. How are you anyway? Good, thank you. I was trying to explain this gag to like a 22-year-old at work. And this was like Big Brother 2003 or four. And it's like, it was the first Big Brother and everyone was into it. And he was like, no, no. one watches Big Brother. What are you talking yeah. about? I'm like, I know, I don't watch it anymore either. But like, trust me, at this time, everyone was watching. It was a big deal. Yeah. And what was the lady's name who hosted the Gretel show? Gretel Klein. Gretel yeah. Klein. And, and poor Gretel had to try and yeah. get through an interview. I'll tell you what, I, I don't remember the guy's name or anything that happened at that show. I just remember him with the tape. Same. And what was it? Like a yeah, free, to, free to bed yeah, or Yeah, I think it was or? a Free the Refugees okay. uh, sort of thing, which I'm not taking the piss of, yeah. uh, just by the way. Yeah. Uh, the bombers just suck. Uh, <laughs> and I, I felt like I needed to protest <laughs> that. Yeah. What is it? I was like, the ghost, free, yeah, free the Refugees. Yeah, yeah. Derek's yeah. just put it up on the screen so we can ha- have a look at it yeah. all. Wow, that um, is... Yeah, yeah, it is a dated reference, Joel. I, I love it. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I was like, because I've, I've been talking to a lot of people about like how I'm protesting by not buying a membership and yeah. then this just felt like the natural progression. Okay. <laughs> I like it. I like it. It's, it's, your, way, it's your way of protesting. Um, let's let's get stuck into it, fellas. Bit, bit, bit of stuff to talk about. Um, we can talk about the game. There's obviously been some lists of news and then maybe we can do a bit of a reflection on the year. Um, I went back and... Looked at some of the predictions from earlier in the season from myself and a few people on the pod and also some of our guests. And it's pretty funny, some of the stuff that people said <laughs> pre-season. But 
a lot of uh, a lot of accuracy I've found mm. in terms of the ladder position. That's that's one mm. thing a lot of people got got pretty spot on. But once you get start to get down to individuals, it starts to get a bit more rogue from uh, a few of the responses there. But um, maybe we'll just do a quick wrap of the game in all of all of its glory. Uh, James, it, as as that was as comfortable of a loss I've ever watched in my life, knowing that I wa- I didn't feel embarrassed, but nor did I care that we lost. Uh, and I I mean to be fair, I. I we spent half the game on a live stream with Herbertron drinking beer, <laughs> yeah. so I wasn't that, I wasn't that attentive. Uh, we talked about Mike Whitney and who dares wins for a long time, but look, it wasn't too bad, was it? No, it wasn't the worst. I mean, you know, you always worry when the season's over after the players drop their head, had to go to Brisbane, play a team that's preparing for finals. It was a recipe for disaster, really, and, you know, their inaccurate kicking probably meant that it, mm. it wasn't more so, but 20 points in the end was surprising probably flattered us again they kicked 11 goals 21 mm-hmm. so um yeah i mean reasonably proud of the effort i suppose in terms of not dropping the head particularly mm. towards the end when they probably had every right to five goal last quarter with not much to play for um but you know to be in that situation in the first place is still disappointing and that meant that meant that the care factor was probably pretty low from my side as well yeah i'm not sure about you guys but watching the two early games on the Saturday where there was what both just about 100 point margins mm. and I was like oh god we're going to be the other one aren't we we're going to be the next team to yeah. check out but they didn't check out and when we are you know clamouring to find positives at this point yeah. of the season that is one of the few things that I go well at least we didn't get absolutely mm. thrashed like we did this time last year Joel yeah that's that's it it's a, I guess a bit of an improvement on last year in that sense um, it was it's, it's a bit hard to watch. I think now, obviously, uh, Essendon fans are hypercritical of all the mistakes that are happening. Uh, like, I was watching the Freo-Port game yesterday, and Freo, in that last quarter, had so many opportunities to hypothetically win the game. They just kept doing terrible disposal inside 50. And I consider Freo a better team than we are. So, that made me sort of reflect, and I'm like, are we just so, so hyper-focused on Essendon's mistakes all the time that we're not really realizing that lots of teams are making similar mistakes mm. uh, but then you know uh, I started writing notes on the specific things that were happening throughout the game and I was like oh we do some pretty terrible stuff so I'm glad it's over um, you know I think uh, we've already seen some list changes as you mm. mentioned you kind of called that on Thursday you were like we'll see some before Monday's pod Yeah, um, and we'll discuss those so yeah we'll see what happens from here but yeah uh, I watched the game because I had to for the play. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I want I want to highlight probably my my favourite moment of, of the entire game uh, was when Jake Kelly kicked Eric Kipling who was on the ground <laughs> oh in, a, in a moment of frustration. Which I, I can't tell if that's a man who maybe has been given his marching orders or was just <laughs> aware that maybe this was his last chance to have a crack. And don't get me wrong, he had a crack. He was really involved in that first quarter. And I was mm. like, gee, he's really playing for his career here. Mm. But then he, you know, handballed it directly to someone for a goal. Oof. He kicked tip it on the ground. And I was <laughs> like, okay. One of my few positives from the game was that Jake Kelly did finally hit a target by foot. So I, was, <laughs> I was quite pleased to see that. And if that's how he goes out, then well done, Jake. <laughs> yeah, great. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, that was that was a highlight. Uh, and then, of course, yeah. I'm not sure. Do you guys tune into Herbertron's stream? I didn't, know. It, it was... It was funny. Yeah. There wasn't a lot of serious football chat going on. <laughs> and yeah, I, I enjoyed it. Just getting involved, talking to all the people. I, I, the thing I noticed pretty quickly is that because all his content is, you know, potting Essendon for the most part, mm. the occasional pro Essendon video, that I think a large portion of his audience are not Essendon supporters. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I was like, oh, just uh, to serious one, anyone, uh, who do you think Essendon should pick up the trade period? And like oh, five oh, comments oh. were like, Massimo Dear Bros. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> okay, okay. That's, this, is, this, is, this is the areas that we're in. Um, do you guys have anything else in this game that you want to speak about or should we just move on? Uh, okay, so we can go to bads? Uh, yeah, or are you, are you uh, looking for positives? No, I no, think we're there. <laughs> no, 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 just straight away. All right, cool. Well, I do have a few then actually. Um, uh, one thing I thought was weird was Jake Stringer kissing his Essendon badge on his jersey. He's pointed to the, the, um, the sky every single goal he's kicked this year, but he kicked a goal in the game. The first goal that he kicked, he grabbed his Essendon badge and went like this. And I was like, that's not going to get you a three-year $800,000 <laughs> contract, Jakey. You don't kiss your badge in a loss on the last... Uh, you know, game of the season and expect for that to impact your contract status. Uh, Not a kiss was, of farewell, was it? Yeah, was that kissing the Heppel 
Oh, uh, maybe. Shaka's oh, single. Because okay. I yeah. did see that okay, and thought yeah, that's yeah. pretty strange. Right. Yeah. But I'm hoping, without having gone back and looked at the footage, that it was a nod to Bryson. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, it could have been that. I, th- I hope it was. Yeah. That would make more sense. That would make more sense. Um, He's not like, oh, I just love Dutton Automotive. Mm, <laughs> yeah. Mm, love it. Yeah, I just nah. love luxury cars <laughs> yeah. so much. No, in my head, I was like, he's like, oh, fuck. Like, I don't know if I'm going to get a contract. Here. I love the club. I love the <laughs> club. Trust <Yeah>. me. <laughs> Uh, uh, also, poor Archie Roberts, you know, uh, fuck, we're just going to play him into a bad player. He started missing <laughs> targets in the second half yeah, as well. And yeah. it's just like, oh, we're, we're doing it. It's already starting to happen to him, mm. uh, which is a real shame as well. Uh, he'll be right. He's he, he's a young fella. Mm. Um, I guess a positive was that Joe Danaher didn't kick 10 goals. Yeah, that was that was a positive for me. It is a positive. Benny McKay, for all his errant disposals, I thought defended pretty well. In that part of the ground, mm-hmm. that's about as far as my analysis yeah. goes. I think <laughs> the errant disposals is right. Like, I don't. It, how can we possibly turn it over that many times from kicking? Like, oh. that was crazy. Like, you know, it's not that hard to not turn it over from a kick in, or at least get it to a fifty-fifty contest. But mm. like, they had multiple shots on goal. Just we find a way. Kicking. Mason we, Redmond will find do. a way. Oh, He'll find a way Redmond. to kick it to someone in a Brisbane jumper. Boy, oh boy, don't. It yeah. actually got to the point where the commentators were asking whether there was a jumper clash yeah. going on because we weren't just turning the ball over. We were lacing out <laughs> Brisbane, Brisbane players. players like on the chest, mm. uh, and there was obviously that one Jake Kelly one where yeah. he handballed it. Straight to someone to Brisbane, mm. um, yeah. and yeah, when the commentators oh, are asking whether there's a jumper clash, you know mm. that the disposal is not going well. No, was was that of their form of protest rather than putting the tape over their mouths, Joel? Do you reckon they're like, we're just going to kick it to Brisbane players? Yeah, because yeah. they're upset that Hepps didn't play last week. Yeah, that's right. I agree. Good protest, guys. <laughs> Good protest. But also, maybe win footy. <laughs> yeah. Your protest should be winning games of footy. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. If you can try that maybe next time. Yeah, um, that was of course the last time we will see. Mr. Dyson Heppel mm. running out for the red and black. And with Heppel going, that is the last of the 34 to uh, hang up the boots at Essendon. And mm. we've, I mean, obviously there were people who were at the club, you know, near the, the band happened and all that stuff. But uh, at least that group, mm. that's it. They've all gone. So hopefully we can finally move on. I hope so. He finished with thirty-four disposals as well. I, I know he was really good. Yeah. He, 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 fitting. He had, <laughs> Very he, fitting. He had a pretty <laughs> had a pretty good game. So. Yeah. Uh, let's 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 definitely hope. And and there is obviously changes happening. Uh, but uh, it'd be nice to be finally rid of that curse. Mm. Um, I feel bad for him though. Like me too. Two hundred and fifty games, mm. no finals wins. You know, stuck by the club, which was great, and we love him for that. And could have gone elsewhere, mm. but just the fact that he never had a good group around him, and yep. that's it. You know, he'll be one of those players who just never got to see it. Yeah, it's, e- hard. it's easy to forget that he had like a pretty uh, good start to his career and, and mm. middle of his career. Like he had that three year period where he was all Australian. He mm. kind of was pretty close in the Brownlow for like most of the year uh, mm. at one stage and. Yeah, it was kind of dominating in the middle, uh, kicking snags and stuff. And yeah, then he had that f- the foot injuries, which kind of started yeah, to like stunt him. But yeah, he, he was a really good player. He did. He progressed beautifully, and he's seen that pathway now with the likes of your Sheasels, where they come in and they put them at half back because mm. mm. they can use their skills and read the game well. And then he yeah. was transitioning into that sort of inside midfielder mm. um, and, and sort of that tall inside midfielder that mm. was sort of starting to come into the game at that time. Um, but yeah, you're right. Since that foot injury, he was never really the same. And probably his, you know, um, biggest benefit to the club was probably off the field. And I think you heard people Definitely. talk about that a mm. lot. His leadership, bringing everyone together, particularly putting the younger players under his wing. Um, that was probably his mm. his biggest addition to the club from, from then on because, yep. yeah, those foot injuries really debilitated him. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we'll go to... The news of the night, which is, of course, the first round of delistings. A fresh batch. <laughs> nice and quick. Really quick. Yeah. But, you know, three guys who were not featuring the side and haven't featured for a little while. So, they've obviously had their exit interviews sometime last week and been given the word. Mm. Uh, but, I mean, if you're hearing this first, well, well done to you. But I'm assuming most people are aware by now. But Nick Hind, Kane Baldwin and Tex Wanganine have all been... Given the chop and will not be playing senior footy at Essendon next year, um, 
which is upsetting for some people on social media. Uh, Hindy certainly had a lot, a lot of fans. Mm. Um, obviously, Tex has a very recognisable surname, and poor Kaney's just body just can't hold up. Uh, unfortunately, what's your initial thoughts, Joel? Uh, I can understand Tex and Kane. Um, both for those various reasons. Um, Hindy, I get it as well, but I feel it's a bit stiff because he had a big impact in a number of games, I thought, this year. And, mm. you know, when he was out of the team or got dropped from the team, I thought he was a bit stiff to get dropped at that stage. And then, yeah, he's, you know, without watching the VFL games, he's had some pretty big VFL games as well. So I'd maybe be, I feel like maybe he'll get picked up by someone is he the sort of person that we would re-rookie at some stage or something like that? I guess not with a post like this. Yeah, he's a wrong but, si- he's a wrong side of thirty, which I think sort of goes against him. Yeah, now. you know, if it's a young guy, you'd probably be more persistent. But mm. this is probably what he is. Bit of a shame. And as, as he gets older, he's not going to get any faster. And I think that speed was definitely the weapon that he had. Yeah, but yeah, there was there was a couple of games there middle of the season where I thought he played some yeah, like you said, some really really good footy. But then he just slowly started to not not get as many mm. disposals, not get involved as much and probably wasn't doing the the structural things that they maybe they were looking yeah. for out of a guy playing, you know, wing or sort of half forward at times. Um, and he's a great bloke. You know, I got to interview him at the start of the year and he was, a, he was an absolute ripper. Mm. Um, and I reckon whenever the Don's having their Mad Monday, whether it was today or another day, <laughs> uh, I reckon he'd be absolute A-grade value yeah. on, on the piss, Nick Hind. So... <laughs> Uh, that's a shame, but yeah, not surprised by the two. Like Kaney would have been nice if they stuck by him because I, I, you could see the talent was there, For sure. but his body was just cooked. You know, yeah. kind of like Hunter. Just the body's just unfortunately just not going to get that's up to it. it. Um, and then yeah, Tex got a chance because of his last name, and that's it. So mm. you know, he had his crack, and that's the end of that. Um, plenty of people online. Upset that there wasn't another like seven or eight names on that list. I think. <laughs> they wanted blood. They were, they were out red. for blood. But yeah, I think there's obviously a little bit of process that needs to happen over the next couple of weeks. And yeah. I would assume that there's probably a handful of players who are in a group that if we go get a replacement for them, uh, whether that be uh, a trade or possibly draft, I think most likely a trade scenario or a free agent scenario that then they would be moved mm. on. But if mm. we don't, then they might be offered a one-year deal because there isn't anyone better, um, which is going to upset a lot of people, Yeah, I find. Well, yeah, it's like you were saying uh, on Thursday and I've said throughout, it really depends on where they see our list as well, you know, which that would be, as part of all these changes, Mm. that would be great to get Mm. some clarity on that and to like go into the intention with uh, the season with the intention of like the... Yeah, we're rebuilding or with a, we're having a red hot crack and we're not protecting our players anymore from, you know, this mental instability they got. We're challenging them to rise and like Mm. say that we think we're a finals team. How would you, how would you guys feel if we saw a lot of exits and we just really heavily loaded up on the draft and we're going like a real strong youth rebuild mantra that, yeah, might mean that we've still got another couple of years of feeling pretty shit like would you be able to stomach that would you be okay with that absolutely not only stomach but i'd probably be for it um i think if you believe what you've heard in the media particularly from caroline wilson around brad scott not having the full decision making power around this team and to use her words coaching with one hand tied behind his back Mm. if that is true and now the exit of dodoro and others will free him up. He's obviously had to look at this team for a couple of years now and now has an understanding of the squad he wants and the style that he wants to play. And maybe this is the start of that with, mm. with Hind exiting and a lot of people thinking that was probably pretty stiff. Potentially, we now see what he really wants to do with this team. And I think for where we're at at the moment, um, it's better to go to the draft. We've seen what Hawthorne have done really quickly off the back of bringing in youth, mm. but backing in, that youth and playing a consistent brand of football, it's not that far away if you can get it right. And I think the competition is so even now that, you know, it doesn't take a lot of improvement to, to jump up and play finals. So mm. I think we should go to the draft from all reports. It's a really strong and deep draft as well. So if you can get a good hand, um, you know, offload some of those fringe players that, you know, the likes of maybe Richmond are interested in, get some points for Kako, take your pick eight. Um, I think it's a good opportunity to, mm. to bounce off that. How do you feel about um, the... So Dave Barham spoke with Mark Robinson. When was it? Maybe over the weekend? 
But he essentially was just sort of like, yeah, this is where we're at. Was very accepting of the fact that, you know, this latter position is very just indicative of where they, at least he, he views it. Like, are you happy that he's gone, yeah, that's where we are? Or do you want to see more aspiration? Or like, where, where do you sort of read those comments? I would say, uh, it's not as if Brad Scott hasn't been saying that, you know, he's not promised anything this year. Uh, you know, and, and he said it's going to take time and he said that we're still working on stuff and, and we're not there yet. So that's kind of consistent messaging. I, I guess what I'd like to know is where do you see us going or, or what are we going to commit to? Because if it's, if it's, because we don't want to stay there. Mm. It's not like a, yeah, mm. this is where we're at. It's like, okay, mm. well, are we going to go backwards to go forwards or are we going to go forwards really, really hard and commit to trying to play finals or commit to, you know, being a good team and, and making it public and stating that we think we're good enough to play finals and that we're going to chase down anything is possible because, you know, the more we keep giving this group excuses, the more they'll probably take them. So yeah. I feel like it, that kind of, to me, is just the messaging that we've heard all year. Um, but I would like to see a commitment either way and like a clear, like, this is a direction and how we're going to get better. Hmm. Um, you know, and they, they said eight years at the start of last year or the start of this year or whatever it was. And you've got you've got time to do both of those things in that time. You can either rebuild or you can have a red hot crack now. So choose one and, and back yourself. Yeah, because I, I definitely think that there's some talent in parts of the ground who are in that nice sort of, you know, 20 to sort of 26-year-old age bracket hmm. that we can build upon. But there's quite clearly a lot of people in that, you know, 27 to 30-ish mm. bracket where it's like they're just not getting better. They're not getting any better. Mm. And if this is all you've got, then we've got to start looking at other options because mm. you can only carry so many of those sort of guys. But unfortunately, that generation, the Laverty, uh, Langford, Redmond gen is just not going to take us there, I don't I don't yep. think at least, no. uh, without some serious talent around them sort of bring them up. So... Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a fascinating few weeks because I, don't know, I keep sort of changing my mind on whether or not I think it's you know a case of all right we go and make some sensible decisions, get some free agents who are in that sort of mid twenties bracket, or do we just full just pull the trigger and just go your cut, your cut, your cut, your cut. Let's go to the draft and we'll we'll go from there because mm. I think it, like I'm thinking about like Zach Merritt, like he's still got a fair bit of footy to play in his career, but it'd be a pretty hard conversation with the coach him going we're going to be going backwards to go forwards because yeah. he's because he has tread water for so much of his mm. career. Um, and there might be some other players in that group who would probably wouldn't, wouldn't want to be hearing that. You yeah. know, maybe, a, maybe a Darcy Parrish, for instance. So, hmm. How, how do you feel about the, um, the length of the contracts that Darcy Parrish and Jordan Ridley and, uh, you know, Mason Redmond are on? Uh, I mean, it's sort of, sort of the standard now i suppose yeah. which doesn't really answer the question i know but you're sort of forced to do it yeah. um so i can understand why um you know i know kane corns was really critical of the ridley contract mm -hmm. just because of his injury history you know parish has had his troubles in that area as well so mm -hmm. i understand the criticism there but i think you as a list <laughs> management team you've almost got no choice you either offer up a contract yep at that length or you lose your player or you lose them. Um, there's no in between and you wouldn't ba blame the player for taking a longer deal uh, over a short one anyway mm. so I think we almost have to do it whether mm. you like it or not that's that's up to you but yeah, yeah. I there's, think we have to probably do it. Fair. there's all and there's also just the the Tasmania thing as well that they're sort of going okay we're gonna we're gonna keep you until at least after that first initial period where Tasmania will have a lot of a lot yep. of options because yeah, you just don't want to be stuck in that position where suddenly you're yeah. having several guys get picked and then maybe even if you're not at the good end of the ladder, your draft's getting compromised as well as as well as losing players and that can, that can really set mm. you back. But yeah, I mean, I like there are some players I don't like it. Like we gave Andy McGrath a six-year deal, which I think is an absolute joke. Mm. But as James said, that is that is the standard now. Yeah. Um, longer contracts, you know, spreading the money out to manipulate the salary yeah. cap as you can. It's just... That's just what it is. Mm. Maybe maybe not for McGrath so much, though, because Ridley, key defender, very good player when he's at his best. Darcy Parrish, one of the better on ballers when he's fit, one of the better clearance players in the competition mm. when he's fit. McGrath, and we, sp we spoke about it on the funeral podcast as well, what point of difference does McGrath bring to your everyday footballer? Because I, could put, I, I feel like I could put Archie Roberts in his role and there wouldn't be mm. too much of a negative impact 
he's for agile. us right now. He's mm-hmm. agile. Uh, <laughs> he's very he's, he's very good at like dancing around a few blokes. That's yeah, you know, giving it straight back to them by foot. Yeah. <laughs> you sign your key position players. You sign yeah. your gun on ballers yep. to those sorts of deals. Mm. Do you sign a a back pocket with yep. pretty average? foot skills yeah. to a six year deal that's probably where I'd argue yeah a player who we thought we could start in the back line and move into the midfield <laughs> but didn't work out mm. and now he's back to the back line yeah yeah anyway um, uh, you go one more. Was, this is a throwback to when we were talking about the game yeah uh, I said on Thursday night that we shouldn't be playing Guelphie because he's going to get injured <laughs> you, were, you were 100% correct <laughs> like, how, everyone could see that from a mile away it was I, I said it on Thursday and for the for the non premium listeners I said to you Giles like there's one way of looking at this the, the way this team has been picked this week and you could either go alright it's you know selection integrity we're always going to pick our best team regardless of what you know, exclude, let's exclude Heppel but that's that's it or was this a team getting picked who weren't going to cough up a 100 point loss mm. and embarrass a coach and put his position in jeopardy because I saw that team get picked and I saw the way that we played that game where we really possess the ball we try to switch yeah. it a lot yeah, we're yeah. very cautious like it reminded yeah. me to that like the early Brad Scott football how how like mm. how, how like slow we were to move it and I, I think I might, I might have said on the stream to her I'm like they're just trying not to get smashed here like they're really not trying to do too yeah. much and to that little flurry towards the end they were really mm. just like let's just not get opened up here mm. and we're going to play the most conservative footy we can because that's if I'm going to be real dark on it, that's how I viewed that game. That was Brad going, I'm just not going to cough up a huge loss. Oh, here you go. The, oh, the protest is back out. He's got the pen going. All right, what's he, what's he writing here? It's going to take me a while right That's the Essendon media machine being like, we're losing members. Um, we need to not have a big loss so that we don't get another 5,000 cancellations before the season's over. I couldn't get that all out on one piece of paper. Okay. So that was what I was... That okay. was my point. Okay. Well, thank you for the... Essendon Media Machine. Did we find out what the name of that guy was from the, the, from the Big Brother? What was his name? Oh, yeah. I can't remember. Oh, Derek had it on. Yeah, Derek. Merlin. Merlin. Oh, Merlin. Thanks, thanks, Merlin. Thanks, Merlin. There we go. Thank you, Merlin. <laughs> Merlin over here in the corner. Um, uh, boys, I thought we might just do a bit of a... Uh, you know, some key points from the season have a bit of a mm. look at it all some goods and some bads um it was actually kind of hard for me to answer some of these but I'll, I'll start with the easy one off the top so player of the year um james i'll give you a nice easy one who's the who's your player of the season well i actually put three names down because i think they all deserve mm. a mention i'm sure they'll all get mentioned in this but i'll stick with who i've got um and it is zach Merritt. yeah i wanted to look elsewhere oh, because I know, it's, I know it, i know it's boring <laughs> Um, we do it week in, week out, even with the goods. I sort of write his name and then get stuck into some others and try and dig a bit deeper. But it would be remiss to go past Zaki. Uh, I spoke about him potentially being All-Australian captain earlier on in the year. Once again, team performance probably costs him <laughs> they uh, have, they a have spot. Just, they have just named the, the squad. Sorry to cut you off. Did, he, he is, of course, the only Essendon player on, the, on it. So, how, oh, Sorry. Continue. Yeah. Um, That's fair enough, but, but continue. Yeah, well, there's is. one. One small win, once again, is yeah. Zach Merritt's individual performance. Yeah. Um, was nice to see the likes of Caldwell and Durham step up and give him some, some support. Um, and certainly Caldwell was very consistent throughout the year as well. But um, yeah, Merritt, once again, great leader, leads by example um, rather than words, which has been an issue for our club for a long time. <laughs> Um, love watching him play. His foot skills are great. Hardball winner. Um, just really disappointed not to see him see some success. You spoke about Heppel seeing some success. Mm. Merritt's probably the other one that you'd just really love to to see get some reward. Mm. Um, hopefully we can continue to improve and support him and he does see that success. That would be great. Um, but yeah, he was certainly the player of the year for me once again. Yeah, I think it's Zach and then Daylight too. You know, a Calders or a Durham. Yeah. Probably no one else to throw in there. Um, this one, I think, was a bit harder. Um, and I'll go to you for this one, Joel. Best new recruit. Hmm. It is a bit harder. Because um, halfway through the season, it was pretty clear. And then Ben yeah. Mackay's form absolutely disappeared. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't think I can say Ben Mackay because you've got to look at the cost to value mm. ratio as well. Mm. Um, you know, and if he's a $300 stake, you know. It kind of feels like I've cooked something uh, well done on the barbecue accidentally and forgotten about it. To be <laughs> yeah, um, wasted some wagyu. You know. Yeah, uh, look, I, I was really enjoying how uh, Derzma was building into the season, um, and uh, 
you know, he was really starting to get on the score sheet. He was really uh, making some great defensive and offensive efforts and really playing that up-to-back wing role. Um, so it was a shame to see, you know, him not feature towards the end. But um, uh, he, he was fantastic, uh, I think, and, and really building. And, and definitely a, a role that we needed in the team. So mm. I'm probably going to have to give it to him. Okay. I, I went with Nate Caddy mm. because, yeah, I... I couldn't give it to any of the guys who came in as mature ages because, yeah, Ben Mackay fell, th- fell off the face of the earth. Yep. Dersma was injured a lot. Gresham was very underwhelming. Yeah. Apart from some good early games that I felt and seemed to bob up and kick goals in games that we didn't win mm. um, and then kicked a goal that was disallowed. But anyway. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, I had to look at the new guys. I'm like, well, it was kind of out of Archie Roberts or Nate Caddy and I'm, I'm going to go with Nate Caddy. So. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think he's a very promising young talent. And Definitely, one of the shining lights that we can take with us to next season is that the Nate Nate Dog will mm. have a preseason, probably put a bit of muscle on, and start to become a bit more to handle for key defenders. Like watching watching him up against Harris Andrews. Like, yeah, obviously Harris Andrews, you know, comfortably won that thing. But it was just like, you know, he's taken the number one. Like yeah. they're really going, hey, you, you're you're going to be the big dog. For like, sure. let's let's teach you how to how to be that. So, um, yeah. Nate for mine. What about you? Yeah, I had Ben Mackay and Nate Caddy written down. I, I still thought Mackay's year was solid. I know his last month in particular. He's handballing out of all the skills <laughs> out of all the skills in football that you think that you would have down pat. His handballing is the one that mm. he just can't get right. But I thought overall his year was really strong. Mm. We desperately needed a key position defender. No one mm. else can stay on the park. Ridley was in and out. Reed played all of ten minutes. Baldwin didn't get on the park so uh, he was really really important for us and I know that he was poor particularly in sort of the last third but um, I can't imagine how bad things would have been if Ben Mackay went down mm. I'm trying to picture that yeah. back six mm. he really doesn't have any help yeah. there um, you know without Ridley particularly there's no one really coming across and, and supporting Laverde no. is not that player no. um, and I think I'm right without double checking it that he played every game for the year which I don't think he's ever done before so, so you know mm. a guy coming in that there was issues mm. around injuries and staying on the park he played yeah. every game for us and yeah. and I thought one on one with key forwards probably did relatively well yep yeah. um, again kept Joe Danaher to one goal which no one would have thought would have been the case on the weekend so yeah, you know every game. for mm. all his flaws you know I thought he was thought he was pretty solid yep uh, and yeah Nate Caddy really exciting probably um uh, delivered a bit of optimism for all the Essen supporters towards the end of the year <laughs> yeah. when they were starting to check out. He's a guy that you, you, you go and watch, um, you know, and I just hope that we don't kill his confidence, let him play with freedom, let him fly for his marks. He's going to make mistakes. Um, I'd like to have some support around him. You know, Peter Wright out of the side, he really was becoming that that number one. Langford and Stringer are mm. crafty forwards, but they're not big, scary, dominant forwards. Mm. Uh, it'd be nice to have a big boy next to him just to yeah. support him and, you know, drag a couple of defenders, give him some time and space yep. because, mm. you know, it's a lot of pressure to be the number one man uh, yeah. at this stage. Yeah, it'd be it'd be handy if someone could be the, you know, the Harry Mackay to the Kerno mm. in that sort of relationship. Mm. Biggest disappointment? I, I'd i like to go first. Yeah, please, 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 okay. please. Um, And I'm going to say Mason Redmond is my mm. biggest disappointment because, uh, like, I don't know, it, there, there are some players who've had bad years, but... I don't have high expectations for them. Like I don't have high expectations for Laverty or Kelly. Um, I don't mm. have high expectations for Andy McGrath because I've moved on from him a while ago. Mm. But Redmond, I've just I, I, I expect more from him, particularly with the ball use. Like yeah. this, uh, he doesn't need. Like I've never considered him to be some absolute, you know, cutthroat elite halfback who can just you know hit a needle in a haystack. But I always felt he was pretty serviceable. Yeah, he like was. there were times. Yeah. Last year, or the year before, we were like, "Oh, maybe you could make the All Australian squad, probably not the team, but maybe you could crack the squad on some form." You know, obviously getting forward and kicking mm. goals, but it just seems that this year that whether it's been the change in role with um, Nick Martin being there or getting a haircut and losing all his powers, uh, but he's just, he's mm. he's been terrible. He's been absolutely terrible this year. He's been. Absolute crap. He looks really disinterested. He looks like a... I hate saying it, but he looks like a guy who's just gotten a fat contract and has gone, cool, I can check out now. Yeah. Which is the last thing we want to be seeing. But, like, kicking it out and literally kicking it straight to an opposition player, and that's happened many times this season. Mm. I'm I'm concerned. And, yeah, mm. he's been my biggest letdown. So, yeah, I'm pretty pretty sad about that. 
Yeah, it's a bit concerning because it does look like an attitude issue. Mm. Uh, it looks like, as you said, someone that signed a nice big deal and is pretty comfortable with where he's at. Um, but also, I can't help but think that maybe there's an attitude issue with uh, Nick Martin taking that mm. distributor role off yeah. halfback. He's sort of, it looks like, without having any inside knowledge, that he's lost his, his fun role where he has 30 and mm-hmm. kicks a goal. And he's not interested in playing another role, particularly mm. a defensive one. And I can't remember who <clears> sent in some footage into our group chat the other day, but it was him guarding grass with yeah. his back mm. to the player. And mm. Merrick gave him a bit of a bait because mm. he didn't cover his player when he led. So, um, yeah, it's it's really disappointing. When he signed that contract, he spoke so strongly around where this group was going and everyone was buying in. And one of the reasons he signed was because he believed in what Scott was preaching. Mm. Yet his actions have just not backed that up no, whatsoever. Um, yeah, it's really disappointing as Joel uh, I'll, I'll puts me- pen to paper I'll, over there. What are you doing, Merlin? What are you doing over there? I feel like I'm just going to keep on. You needed that up. sign. <laughs> it's a didn't machine. Yeah, it's all PR. It's it's awesome. Don't believe a thing that comes out of anyone from Essendon's mouth. <laughs> Apart from Zach Murray, you can tell what yes. he's, you can yeah. tell he's saying what he's thinking. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, oh, yeah, Merlin, what's, uh, what's <laughs> your, who's your biggest disappointment? Uh, my di- my, I thought about this one. My, my biggest disappointment is Darcy Parrish because I had such high expectations of him. So it, it's not that he was our worst, as you sort of said, but I thought he was going to have such a good year and I was so pumped for him in preseason and I was like, he's going to tear this competition apart this year and he's finally going to like, you know, recapture that form from a few years ago and take it to the next level. And then obviously it just didn't happen and I'm just disappointed with lots about it. Like he did play some good games towards the end of the season, but like the fact that he was out for such a long time, the fact that it's an injury that he's had multiple times, you know, the fact that we can't get on top of that, the fact that, you know, it impacted his fitness for a while and it potentially is impacting his kicking as well. I don't know, but it just, I was just disappointed in that whole situation because of how high my hopes were mm. for Darcy at the start of the year. Yeah. Well, I mean, looking at some of the preseason predictions, uh, Jesse had him as his BNF. Yeah, that mm. was his his prediction. Mm. Actually, I went back and listened to that, and Jesse was so pumped on Darcy Parrish. I mean, we all were. Mm. He looked yeah. great. He was. He just looked so good in preseason. And then that that bun calf just went. And yeah, I I, I totally understand what you're saying because seeing what could have been, mm. like there's there's a person losing form, not playing bad, but there's a person whose whole year has been killed by injuries. Yeah, and he 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 is a, a valuable asset of the team when he's fit and playing well, and yeah. Yeah, sucks. Mm. What about you, James? Um, He's probably not the biggest disappointment in terms of some of the names we've already put down, but I wanted to talk about him and get your thoughts as well. But Sam Draper, I put down as a big disappointment. Um, And I think he gets away with a little bit, I reckon, just because he's a bit of a cult hero and, and the fans love him. And I certainly love him when he's up and going as well. But I think this year overall, looking at the bigger picture, it was a bit disappointing. I mm. really wanted him to take that next step mm. in terms of his development. We obviously brought Goldstein in the club as a bit of a mentor and a leader, which he probably really hadn't had um, during his time at the club in the ruck department. Um, he obviously struggled with in- injury throughout the year. He played some really inconsistent football his discipline was often really really poor which Mm. um Mm. you know it's not good enough from your number one ruckman you look Mm. around the league and they are often the leaders they set the tone um yeah his his attitude and discipline was poor decision making in game was really poor continuously grabbing the ball and kicking it when teams have set up loose players behind the ball and everyone will remember that melbourne game in the wet Mm. where that just continued to happen Mm. and happen and happen um And that carry on after the siren against Adelaide, um, just not something I'd expect to see, particularly in a Brad Scott coach side. I just didn't think that sort of stuff would fly. Mm. Um, I know he's a character and I don't want to get rid of that. um, But overall, I think, you know, his lack of development this year and inability to kind of cement himself as the man um, has been disappointing overall. I'll ask you guys a question. Is he the number one ruckman now? And is he the number one ruckman next year? Because you look at the way we've played in the last month without Peter Wright, and he's essentially been playing the forward ruck yeah. role as opposed to being the starting ruck. Nick Bryan has been taking the lion's share of you know centre bounces, which generally means you're the number one ruck. If you're mm. taking the first bounds and most of them, you're number one in the in the ruck stakes. So is Sam Draper even a number one ruck anymore? Is he just a a wild card ruck forward who 
will play forward because obviously he's very good taking contested marks. Mm. He's, you know, you could tell he was working on his kicking, mm. which is good. And I happy to see, you know, he, he did kick goals in most games. Um, but yeah, like, is he your number one ruck anymore? I don't think so. Yeah, that's a good question. I guess he's probably not realistically. <clears throat> um, and uh, yeah, I kind of liked the, the utilization of him um, over the last few weeks. But, you, you know, maybe that's just because I finally saw something different or, or maybe was viewing him differently. So I'm not sure. I think like the, the issue with Draper is the issue that, uh, I guess I have with a lot of people, um, James, which is like, it's it's an attitude thing in a lot of different ways. It's like getting too cocky too quickly. Like uh, there was that goal um, last week uh, where like he kicked this great snag from outside 50. Uh, and then I think, oh, maybe it was a different goal, but like, and Redman was coming over and doing this and they're all yeah. doing these celebrations. And it's like, guys, it's the fucking two minutes into the first quarter. Mm. Like, what are we doing here? Like you, you need to like, you know, Hawthorne have kind of earned the right yeah, to be the right, cocky at exactly. the moment, you know? Um, and everyone's sort of buying in, whereas this is just like, it makes me cringe every time I yep. see it. And, mm. you know, he can do fantastic things, but you've got to do mm. it consistently and for long enough to really then start like being able to do that without it seeming ridiculous, yep. I think. Yep. Uh, favorite game, Joel? Uh, I reckon there's a few, um, but I really like the Bulldogs win. Mm. Oh, yeah. Because... I was, I was the most worried about that. I reckon, like we have some, we've had a, a couple of great wins, but the other teams, I was like, they're not our bogey side. Mm, Whereas yeah. the Bulldogs, I was like, they're gonna smash us. Like these yeah. are our bogey side. I was, and I was feeling so bad, and I didn't want to watch it. And then, like I was like, oh, I'll, obviously I will watch it, but like I was feeling awful about it. And like just as that game went on and on and on, I was like, maybe we're a good team. Yeah. Maybe, <laughs> maybe we're different. Yeah. And that was like the the peak for me. I yeah. think of us feeling better, and so. Mm. I feel like that was the best win. And we handled players like Bont and Liber who we, we'd never been able to handle yeah. before. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that, that was the best game of the year for me. Yeah. I, I, it's hard for me to pick between the Giants win or the Pies win. They were both pretty good for either way. The Giants was good because we just played really well against what is clearly a good team mm-hmm. who, you know, they were obviously having a bit of a dip in their season, but we handled them really, really well. And then obviously just, you know, the Pies win was, it was really sort of the, the death knell for their season. Even though they had a little late surge there, that was kind of us putting yeah. putting them out of the equation, yeah. uh, which was nice. Um, so, yeah, I think as a as an experience, the Pies game, as a performance, I think the Giants is for me. Mm. James? Yeah, I had those two games as well. It's always good beating the Pies full stop. But yeah. one of my uh, favorite moments was walking out of that game after having quite a few beers under the belt and uh, running into Jesse who seemingly had a few himself as well uh, and him uh, yelling at the top of his lungs choo 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 uh, something along those lines and at that time I did think the train was on its way but as we know it derailed pretty quickly but I went for GWS at Marvel as well that was the first game mild man got to this year um, and you know at that stage everyone was sort of saying who have we beaten you know we can't yeah. beat can't beat good sides GWS obviously touted as yeah. pretty close to premiership favorites behind Sydney I think uh, at that time um, and we obviously beat them relatively convincingly I think mm. Stringer and Langford from memory kicked a couple of good goals in the mm. boundary and um, yeah when uh, when the Essendon faithful get going at Marble it's a pretty good atmosphere so mm. yeah I enjoyed that one yeah, we've beaten half of the top 10 teams, uh, you know, uh, three pe- three teams that are playing finals and half of the top 10 teams. And admittedly, we didn't get the Hawks when they're in their current form. And, you know, you could probably say that about a few of them, but like, that's a better result than last year. You have yeah. to say that that's a positive, you that know, is a positive. in that sort of sense. And yeah, we didn't lose by as big a margins, but yeah, it's it's just the same mistakes over and over, mm. which gets you. Mm. How many games did we lose to teams whose season was already over? Three? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, three in consecutive weeks. Yeah, three well, in a row. Yeah, three in if a row. you want to ask the next question, yeah, uh, well, yeah. yeah. Least, <laughs> least, segue. least favorite game, Joel. Uh, mine was the Saints game. Yeah, to be honest, uh, like <laughs> the game prior was disappointing, but we were still in with a chance of of having a run for finals by the Saints game. But after that, we were definitely not within a run of making the finals. Like that was so disappointing to give up by. <laughs> Derek's to, loving to, in the corner. <laughs> yeah, to, to, to give up like so early in that game yeah. and to let them run away with it. And to they scored so freely and easily. It was really, really hard to watch. That was the Essington of old. Yeah. That, that performance. I, I've gone with, 
it's a hard one for me, but I've actually gone with the Geelong game mm. because it, I was there. It was terrible conditions. And like, it just, there was just that 20 minute patch where just the game just fell apart. Like, yeah, right. A, shoe, a couple of shit decisions didn't go away. That happens. But they just crumbled, absolutely crumbled mm. in the wet. And Geelong just absolutely killed us. And yeah, I remember being feral. Um, Adelaide games probably just just behind it. Like I sat with James for that one, and that <laughs> yeah. was that was not a fun night. But yeah, the Geelong game really hurts to me. Melbourne Melbourne loss wasn't wasn't great either. But yeah. I guess you could as, as soon as I rocked up at the G in the pouring rain of that game, I'm like, oh, we're going to lose this game. But yeah, <laughs> the Geelong game for me was the one where I was just so disappointed in how they just gave up like mentally. Yep. Yeah, yeah. James, well, I had the Demons game. Firstly, it was just a shit game of footy to watch in the wet. Melbourne play that grinding style loose men back we mm. continued to just grub a kick it to them and mm. back and forth it went until they seemingly got over the top and ran into an open goal square so that was just a terrible game of footy to watch but i thought the team selection heading into that game was really poor we went tall everyone knew it was going to be wet mm. um didn't make any late changes just persisted with it like we mm. do uh, then dropped right the week after for a game at marvel stadium after playing him <laughs> at the g in the wet so i just thought that whole thing summed it up uh, and we oh. just did the same thing for the whole game without making any in-game changes. As I said, Draper continued to grab it out the ruck and kick it mm. to the two loose guys they had behind the ball, Rivers mm. and whoever it was, May or Lever, probably both of them. Um, and that was, it felt like that was sort of the beginning of the rot. Mm. Um, we lost that game. It was a great opportunity to kind of cement our finals position. Um, and yeah, you could argue that, that that was the beginning of the end and, and obviously the Crows, Saints and... Gold Coast followed, so um, yeah, I had that one down. Oh yeah, Gold Coast. Yeah, <laughs> I'd already forgotten about that as well. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> oh my god. Sorry, I went with uh, I went with my um, girlfriend to the G to she's Richmond, mm. so we went and saw the uh, last game. But I forgot Mac Andrew was going to be there, so it brought back all sorts of PTSD <laughs> when I saw him clunking marks there. Oh, so I had man. forgotten about it until yeah. I saw him. Yeah, I mean. I might just, I'm, I'll throw it in there, but it was a long, long time ago. But round four against Port Adelaide was a disgrace. Oh, yeah. That was an absolute disgrace. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was fucked. Like, yeah. this thing, the only, the only way it would make me feel better is Port Adelaide go and win the flag, but that'll make me feel shit because Port Adelaide win the flag. But yeah, I'll just, just put, put that on the agenda that that was abhorrent <laughs> that, that, mm. that night. Um, I'll just, re- we'll just do quick, quick reflections here. These are some of the preseason predictions from earlier in the year. I went back and listened to a couple of pods. So um, I actually can't. I couldn't find what you guys have said, but if, if you remember, you can you can tell me. But um, so I said we'd finish tenth. Um, obviously finished eleventh. Jesse also said tenth. Uh, Julian Destoop from SEN said we'd finish tenth. Mm. Rowan Connolly said twelfth, so not far off the mark. Mark Robertson said somewhere between eleven and fourteen. Again, not far off the mark. So everyone was pretty accurate in that sense. Do you remember what you had, James? Do you recall? Uh, probably would have been a little bit more optimistic. I would have said maybe. Uh, six Seven, to eight. Six to eight. Like that. Joel, do you remember what you had? Uh, I didn't think we were going to make finals, so I reckon it was probably around the 10 mark. I'm okay. just seeing if we'd posted them in the group or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, um, I've said sesh <coughs> predictions, which I think uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's probably going to bring up a lot of different other things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll, 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 we'll let the listeners in. So for the listeners there, our message thread for the sash is called the sesh. <laughs> uh, so that's good. But um, anyway, uh, B and F predictions. I had Nick Martin. Jesse had Darcy Parrish. Didn't end well. Uh, Julina Stoop had Jordan Ridley, didn't end well. Rowan Connolly took the safe bet and picked Zach Merritt, which was correct. Uh, and then breakout year, uh, I had Nate Caddy, so I was pretty happy with that call. Jesse had Zachary, so uh, <laughs> O from two for, for Jess uh, in that sense. Although I guess he, he was pretty close with the um, the ladder prediction. I'll tell you what, boys. Let's I reckon let's take a break. Um, we'll come back with some hot takes, and then we can play. Uh, a bit of list to Cullington, and you can just say, <laughs> "Stay, go, delist." You know, yeah, shoot off into the sun, whatever you need to do. Yeah, love it. Um, all right, we'll be back after this. Welcome back, part two of the pod, the home stretch now for the end of the season. Uh, let's do some hot takes. Here's our Thanks, track. Rob. It's that time of the week where we get some totally rational and well-adjusted opinions onto the pod on the sash. It's hot takes. Hot takes. Dun, dun, bam. Good stuff. <laughs> oh, he's right. No, 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 keep going. has got his bed out again. He's writing. Um, now, we didn't do a pod last week because uh, a bit of illness floating around uh, the crew. Um, but I might just play a couple from last week that I didn't play that, like, 
they haven't changed in terms of what's occurred in the last week. So I might just play them. There's just, there's just two that I might play. So this first one's from Jimmy. Thank you, Jimmy. Hey, guys. I'm just in the back of an Uber after coming back from that shit show uh, at Marvel Stadium. What did we do to deserve this? <laughs> like, I don't know what I did in the past life to deserve this punishment. I mean, I haven't seen a premiership since I was five years old. I've gone to school. I've uh, <laughs> done a lot of things since we won a premiership last or mate, won a final. Just uh, wondering if anyone's got a contact with God or anything because I'd like to know what I've done in my past life to deserve this. Go Plains. Oh, poor Jimmy. Poor Jimmy. Good to know that you went to school, Jimmy. Yeah, it's good to know that you went to school. <laughs> went, went, went raised on the street. Mm-hmm. School of hard knocks. Uh, this one is from interested in renewing your membership, which I think is appropriate for you, Joel. <laughs> Hi there. It's Adam from the Essendon Football Club. Just calling you to see if you're interested in renewing your membership for the 2025 season. Yeah, g'day, Adam. Uh, look, mate, I know you probably don't have anything to do with the playing group and the coaching staff. Um Unfortunately for you, you're the bloke who has to call up us members who spend our hard-earned money on memberships to get fuck all in return. You're probably going to get get abused countless times, and I apologise for that in advance. Um, nothing on you. Don't take it to heart. But yeah, you can get back to the club and tell them to go and get fucked. There we go. How appropriate. How appropriate. I do feel sorry for those people who are going to be doing that because they're going to be calling a lot of people like you, Joel, <laughs> yeah. who aren't going to be very happy. Yeah, I, I think um, I'll just go Merlin when they call me. Just, <laughs> that's probably the safest bet. <laughs> just go full Merlin on them. Yeah. All right. Uh, this is l- the last one from last week. This is depressing, Dun, which I thought was quite good. Hey, boys. Thought about putting some effort into this, but then I decided, F- fuck you. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> We can't get out, just pick up these lyrics. Let's talk about yourselves, everyone. <laughs> Where is she? Uh, was that where you thought it was going? Yeah, without yeah, a doubt, that's, that's where yeah. it was going. Yeah, there we go. Uh, <laughs> nice one. Yeah, that was from last week. Yeah, it was good so stuff. Very good. So yeah, had to had to include that one. Yeah. Uh, let's get to some more current ones. Only a few got sent to. I think a lot of people have checked out for the year, um, <laughs> as you can imagine. But that that doesn't mean the quality is not there. Mm. We might not have the quantity because there's a lot of stuff that gets sent through <laughs> that is just like, <laughs> and I'm like, thanks, man. Um, again, another person sent one in. Goes for five minutes. Thanks, but. I'm not going to play it. Uh, this one is from Mert was right all along. Damn. Don't we have that? Hey, boys. Um, just reporting in before the game. I think we're about two seconds before kickoff. Just wanted to say what a disgusting, disappointing year that we've had and these, these bloody chokers that we follow, all of us. Uh, you know, it hurts hurts me to say, but I think Mert was right from you know preseason. He was saying we were going to be shit, <laughs> and we are shit. Yeah. And what a better way to cap off the year by Benedict Arnold, Joe Danaher, kicking fucking eight goals tonight. And if I see him, uh, if I see Heppel carried out on Joe Danaher's shoulders, I am going to throw my TV <laughs> into the fucking Yarra River. All right, good night, boys. Good season. Jokes. See you next year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, thankfully, Joe Deher did not carry off and have lots of ground, so we're going to be happy with that one. Uh, this one's from Rory in Scotland. Thank you, Rory. So I hope I'm wrong, but I don't see how this ends in anything other than Brad Scott being sacked at some point next year. <laughs> Team's not good enough. He's not giving enough youngsters a go to see if there's anyone better out there. And unless we're able to draft the second coming to Dusty... I don't see how anything changes. 
we'll just be back in the same old position of do we go for an experienced coach or go for one of the fashionable hot assistant names that are out there looking for a messiah to somehow fix all these issues, deficiencies and exercise us of the ghosts of the last 20 years <sighs> yeah anyway, enjoy your off seasons if you find another sport or two to follow to alleviate the pain of what this team does to everyone I hope you're okay, Rory. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just just want to make sure you're all good, brother. I hope just checking in, just to make sure you're all good. Um, yeah, there are. I've had a few messages from people who are definitely off Brad Scott. Someone was messaging me yesterday trying to say that we should go get um, Adam Simpson, who's recently left West Coast. I think. Look, I think you need to go for the thirty. I think Absolutely. that's. I think it's silly to, mm. you know, we we we're getting into real Carlton areas if we're firing blokes every second year. I know we did that with Rutten, but yeah, um, yeah. I think he. I think now that we've actually gutted the joint, yeah. yeah. Now give him a crack and let's see what can happen. That's right. So. Um, and and you know, there there were signs this year. I think that were better. We didn't get scored against as heavily. Uh, obviously, we had some still issues with disposal and just like desire, which you know, a coach needs to obviously improve people's mm. ability to turn up week in week out as well. But you know, there was periods throughout the season where our defense looked a lot stronger when it looked like we had a game plan where. You know, we were stopping teams. And in the back half of the year, we still won a lot of momentum. We just couldn't capitalize on it. Yeah, we so just couldn't score. I kind of feel like from a coaching standpoint, the, the thing that Rory said that I have issue with is the lack of playing young players. That is, that is obviously a concern. Um, yeah. But I feel like from a coaching perspective, he probably got it yeah. a bit more out of the group. Yeah. And like, look, so, some young players did play. It's just some obviously didn't. And there was probably times that we thought maybe mm. they mm. warranted an opportunity. But like... You know, if I'm playing devil's advocate, like Caddy obviously got a quick fair few games. Um, you know, Brian got some games. I would have liked to have seen more. I think we can, most of us mm-hmm. would probably agree on that. Um, Hobbs played most of the early games up until he got injured and then took him a while to get back into the side. Obviously, Coldwell, Durham, guys like that were played every single week. Um, but then obviously there was times where, you know, like like I personally would have liked to have seen Sardis play against Brisbane because it's a dead rubber game and... Why mm. not just mm. you know have a, have an opportunity against a good caliber side? But he can't have them all. Um, but I certainly understand the frustrations from Rory because there's a lot of people who uh, think similarly to him. Uh, a couple more. This one's from Luke. Thank you, Luke. Go and erect an enormous tent over the hangar because we are an absolute circus. <laughs> we are a bunch of. Clowns, <laughs> week in week out, our supporter base gets taken for an absolute ride. They disregard us. They don't respect us. They don't put up any sort of bloody fight, and we have become the laughing stock of the AFL for the best part of two decades. If we're going to continue down this path, we may as well recall some of the absolute greats, the absolute. Genuine premium bozos that we've had in the past. Absolute meme characters like Ariel Steinberg, <laughs> Zach Clark, Courtney Johns. Just bring all of those blokes back. I don't care how old they are. They're probably all in their 40s, but get them all back because we are absolutely disgraceful. There we go. Hey, I had time for Trey Beard. I know he was yeah. terrible, but I had time for Trey Beard. He's probably not in his 40s yet either, I don't think. No, nah, I don't think he is either. <laughs> I don't think he is either. Uh, very passionate, Luke. I yeah. thought when he started that, I thought he was going to say, like, put a tent around and get the, like, bug spray out, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I like his one there. A um, couple more to go. Uh, Garrett from Canada. These are always good, so thank you, Garrett, for sending this one through. Boys, how are we doing? Uh, another season come and gone, and we're in the same spot we usually are. And uh, I did a lot of thinking about, you know, do you renew the membership? And as an international fan, an international member, I get the uh, watch afl.com.au pass or whatever. So I can't pick any other team. Mm. So I, I'm stuck with them. I'm loyal to the heart, I would say. The good news about the season is, yeah, we're shit, but we at least dragged Collingwood down with us. Think about it. <laughs> <laughs> the game we drew, if they beat us, they're in. Again, they lost to us. They beat us. They're in. So, yeah, well, we are shit. We at least fucked their season. (laughs) God, I hate them. (laughs) On to the D-listings. My favorite part. 
<laughs> uh, well, hey, any, anything to uh, you know make it all seem like it's worthwhile. So that's uh, that's good. Ending ending Collingwood season, we like that. That is good. We like that. Yeah, that's great. We like that, uh, boys. We're going to end on a big one. We're going to end on a big one here. We we love our musical numbers. We love people who send them through. Now, this one, Ryan doesn't pay has sent them through a couple before, but I think this goes above and beyond anything that's been sent through before. And I, I think this is the perfect hot take to end uh, mm. the year on. So this, wow. is, this is it. <laughs> I don't want Oh fuck, I've just been a <laughs> vice captain my ass. There's the door, my grandma. Canada's calling your spots for wilds. Cox is ambidextrous, but I can't think he's scared. Put him out to stud, because he's great at having mares. Ah, oh, Chris, try as I might. Why are you so damn hard to fucking like? Laverty's a tough motherfucker and gamer. He shits the bed, but at least he's not a draper. <laughs> that brings me to Perkins. Fuck. Don't need another Archie. Time's up. You couldn't find a ball in your own sack of nuts. I don't want, I don't want you back. <laughs> Peter Wright's confused, shouldn't leave the magoos. Was never a believer, need a two meter breather. You can dob it post high from outside 50, so why are you as shitty as Guelphie is pretty? That was in the studio stuff. The Production bar, quality. The bar has been set for Holy next year, shit. everyone. The oh, bar has absolutely been set. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. I gave just about the entire club a drive by there, which is <laughs> which is good for you. Uh, rhyme doesn't pay, but yeah, that's uh, that's almost too good for this this fucking show. So, <laughs> Way yeah. too good. Release it. Spotify. Yeah. Can we do a film clip to it or something like that? No. Film clip? Yeah. The US Merle just... Yeah. Don't <laughs> do the lyrics. Just yeah. Keep pulling them out. I don't know. Yeah. I don't, yeah. yeah. We just yeah. Edit, edit all the turnovers from the whole season to that, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Maybe send it to Herb. Yeah. Herb, Herbatron. Yeah. yeah Herb, Herb might be able to put it together. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was phenomenal. Well done. That was absolutely phenomenal. Um, yeah. Might just chuck that on the tail of the show. It's that, it was that good. Uh, boys, should we play a bit of... Uh, <laughs> Keep D list. Yep. Trade. Yep. Everyone's favourite game. Yeah. I think Mert played this the other week. Yeah, Mert played this other week. I don't think we have anyone left. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm sure we could do a, a, a more okay. uh, a more a simple version of this. So I'll, we'll start with the uncontracted players, and we'll, we'll keep it simple, and then you guys can throw around your ideas of anyone who may get us some trade value. So uh, Dyson Apple is retired. Um, Harry Jones, keep trade or D list. Uh, keep. I thought he showed some good versatility this year. I would keep him. Mm. Yep. yep. And I'm moving back to the centre half forward line. Okay. Uh, keep from me as well. Uh, Hunter has been delisted. Uh, Jake Kelly, keep de- delist trade. Delist. Delist. I mean, trade if someone will give us something. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <No>. delist. <laughs> uh, yes, he is also on the delist pile for me. Uh, Jake Stringer, stay trade or delist. Although I think you have to probably uh, delist or 
uh, contract. I don't think you can actually trade him. So, uh, well, I keep him, but yeah. I keep him for one year, one year contract. Yeah, I'd get rid of him. I'm, I'm done with him. Ooh. Yeah, I think he's a little bit emblematic of uh, the attitude to professionalism that we need to get rid of. Interesting, interesting. He played. Did he play every game? Or I think he played a lot. Yeah, I think I he, he did. probably would have almost played every I game. Think I, mean, I saw he something. Plus goals. First know? time in his career, he's played every game. I think I saw. Yeah, because I think. If, I'll give you some names. Sorry, I'm just pulling it up. I saw someone speaking about this on Twitter. I, I just thought I'd go have a quick look at it. But I'll I'll give you some players who he kicked more goals than this year, just to just to make a little a little point. So he kicked 42. So he mm-hmm. kicked more goals than Fritch, Toby Green, and Charlie Cameron. Okay, which is pretty handy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know Jack Higgins, Jai Miss. So. Not the worst, but yeah, there's there's some of those games. It was, just the, it was the missed opportunities that pissed me off the most, and burning yeah. blocks. That's that's the thing. That mm. Yeah, and you know, like even if we're we think we're closer mm. to a premiership than a full rebuild, he's probably still not going to be there for the last one. Like, how many years has he got left? Like, if he maintains his current yeah. fitness and commitment standards, and you know, I just I feel like we need to make some really really bold calls with senior players to like uh, pull that sort of. Um, attitude out of the club and, and mm. you know whilst he can win a game off his boot due to talent like you know there's a reason that he's never reached probably the potential that he should have as an mm. AFL player yeah I think it's a again it's, it's just that question of where where they think we are with the current group and whether mm. it's you know like I said it's a full step back to go forward or whether it's building building upon uh, Jaden Davey stay or delist i uh, Stay. You I haven't seen him. I want to see him. Mm. Mm, yeah, stay for one more year. Yeah, I, I, I think you may be like rookie him or something for a season. Uh, Baldwin has been delisted. Um, Guelphy, I think there's rumours that he has already signed the deal, but it's not official yet. So, um, in your opinion, though, stay or, <laughs> a stay or delist? Nah, stay. I think he's in our best 22 when he's fit. The question mark, as Joel spoke about before, though, is can he stay fit? Mm. Let's hope so, but I think at his best, he's... He's good enough. Yep, stay. Uh, Goldstein, stay or retire? <laughs> retire. <laughs> retire. <Yeah>, retire. Retire. <laughs> uh, Nick Hind, obviously delisted. Uh, Sam Wiedemann, somehow still on this list. D-list. Bin. Yep. 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 Yeah, five-year deal for me. <laughs> uh, Wanganeen has been delisted. Uh, Will Setterfield, stay or delist? Delist. I'd like to keep him. I feel like I feel like he's a good depth player. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a fair. Point. Actually, trade him. I don't know if he can because he's at a contract. Yeah. Um, because I think let me hold on. Let me just because I think he a team would pick him up for sure, and we could maybe mm. get a late third round, early fourth, and get some points for um, matching the bid of Keiko. Mm. Yeah, that'd be his fourth club. Let me have a quick look. Will Setterfield, non-free agent. Okay, so we it would be a trade. I'm fairly mm. certain. Um, anyway, but yeah, he's he's out of contract. So, um, and then. Who would you like to trade for some value, fellas? Who would you like to put in the open market? I mean, the obvious name is Dylan Shield. Um, where do you guys stand with Peter Wright? Do you think it's you know worth c- continuing with him because we know that you know the young ruck duo is unproven and our forward line hasn't been amazing without him? Are you do you, are you looking to get value for the fact that there are people you know clubs maybe like a Melbourne who would go for someone like Peter Wright? Uh, yeah, I think if we can get a decent trade for him, then it's definitely worth considering. I can't see our forward line functioning with him, Stringer, if he does stay, uh, Langford, with the amount of like pressure that they're able to bring. And, yep. you know, like if, if a lot of our players, and the issue is with Stringer and with Wright, is that we've got a lot of players who like, as if the other five of that group of six that's around them, like the forward line, midfield line or, or back line, is all playing well and up to scratch, then that really um, accommodates for that person to be one note. But we've got too many players that are one note. Mm. And, you know, unfortunately, like with the lack of pressure that we have in our forward line, and also he's probably an ability to actually mark the ball that well, mm. post-shoulder. I just I can't see him being value to us if, if we can potentially get trade elsewhere. Yep. If we traded right from a structure point of view next year, would you play Caddy full forward? 
Jones centre, a forward. Yeah, with Draper down there a lot as well, okay. probably. Because uh, Caddy's quite mobile mm. too. Mm. Um, so even a, even a Jones, uh, even, yeah, D- Draper maybe deeper and switching up and then um, Caddy and Jones in there. Because cause Jones chases, obviously he's not super quick, but he puts on a lot more pressure as a key forward or as a mm. forward than others do. Um, you know, we could run the risk of being too tall in that sense as well, but... Uh, yeah, I, th- I think that's how I would maybe look at it. Yeah, it was, it's interesting as well because I think that whilst I have liked the Brian Draper thing, they obviously like Brian in particular is an absolute baby in terms of number one rocks. Um And we know that Draper has had his injury trouble. So, like, is, is it a safer option to have Peter Wright there mm. as that option that, you know, one week you only got one of them fit? Mm. Um, something interesting as well, I was actually, I had a quick flick through the, um, the rest of the competition. So, like, assuming which just won't happen. But like going off the current list this season of AFL number one Ruckman, uh, next season he would be the youngest number one Ruck in the comp of the guys who'd be starting. So mm-hmm. Tom DeConning and Jerry are both 25. Oh, sorry, and, and Kieran Briggs as well, but then he'd be 23. And then the rest of them are, you know, 26 up to 33. Yep. In Is Sherry sense. only 25? Yeah, Jerry's only 25. Jesus. Yeah, he looks 40. But, yeah. Um, yeah, he's only 25. But then, obviously, a lot of the guys are late 30s. Uh, sorry, late uh, late 20s, early 30s. So, yeah, if he if he's given that mantle of being the number one ruck to take those bulk minutes, it's a pretty, be, be, pretty big challenge for mm-hmm. him, um, mm-hmm. which I think is why it's good having the two rucks there because I don't think either of them can really hack it as a solo yep. um, at this point in their career. Anyone else you guys want to chuck on the... The trade table. Do you think might actually might actually get us something? Like I like I'd happily sit there and go, oh, let's trade Jaden Laverty, but I don't <laughs> I don't think we're going to get anything from it apart from maybe some picks for maybe like a Richmond. But I think Richmond want to spend picks. They want to use picks on drafts, not take. You know. Yeah, I think I think Shear will go. Yeah. Um, I think everyone's been aware of that <laughs> for a while now. What we get for him will be interesting. Um, there's obviously been rumours around Sardis and Hobbs mm-hmm. getting some interest from. I believe Richmond has been the club name, but I'm sure there's others at least chatting with them. Um, obviously, if Shield goes, does that then give Sardis or Hobbs an opportunity mm. in that midfield? Do they then stay if they say Shield go? Um, not sure. I don't really want to lose either of those guys, but I would understand if the club found a trade that was mm. seemingly beneficial. Um, it'd be disappointing to see particularly Sardis go and get an opportunity and... And play really and do well. well. Yeah, oh, it'd um, kill. absolute kill. And I think we've seen top draft picks be persisted with before uh, and come good. I'd like to think that's the case for him. But um, yeah, what are your thoughts on Sardis in particular? Um, like, yeah, I would have liked to have seen him play against Brisbane, that banging a dead rubber game, being an opportunity to go, hey, go go play on Lockie Neal for a quarter and see how it goes. But like I've sort of said before, I, I do believe that they picked a side with, under the intention yep. to not get smashed. Um, he's clearly got some issues with his kicking, and when he has come into the team and played on the wing, he's looked pretty terrible, apart from, I think, one game where he came on as the sub and he was sort of okay. But he's clearly not at the level yet, and playing in that, that role, it's pretty hard to be at a very young age. So I understand taking time, and, yeah, you just kind of hope that he understands that he's got to do his time to, to crack into that midfield because I do think it's one of the few parts of the ground that we actually have some depth and mm. some reasonable talent there. Mm. Uh, if he was a, you know, key def- if, we're talking about a, if we're talking about a key defender who can't crack the side or a small defender who can't crack this side at the moment, I'd go, well, you're clearly not very good yeah. because mm. the guys who are playing that role have been very bad uh, at <laughs> large junctures of this season. So... Uh, yeah, we'd love to see them both stay. Um, and honestly, don't know who else we, like, unless you're, like, doing something absolutely ludicrous by, like, moving on a Redmond or a Parish or a McGrath. Like, I don't really see who we have that has a lot of market value. I feel like Perco is maybe the only mm. one that would have market value, whether we yeah. want to trade him or not. Like, like obviously... We won't leave Victoria, so we can rule out a bunch <laughs> yeah. of clubs already. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's a shame that Geelong's not closer to Portsea for him. Yeah, um, I know. Unfortunately. Oh, you can get the ferry from Queensland. Oh, that's it's, true. Actually, it's actually quite good. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, uh, maybe he needs to be the prince of the other bay, actually. Yeah, or the other side <laughs> of the bay. Um, yeah, I think with Sardis and Hobbs, I, I, w- I think I would entertain Sardis. I, it would kill me if he went to another mm. club, but... 
if we got the right trade for it and it really made sense for our team, then I because of our midfield is that depth. A, is that another player? Yeah. Like like let's okay, hi, hypothetically, let's say Richmond said he's Daniel Rioli and you got Sardis. You take is that is that the is that the deal? I don't know if Daniel oh, I mean maybe maybe Daniel Rioli. Maybe Daniel Rioli in a pick or something like that. I don't know. I feel like if if it was a a young someone who was a better kick. Well, that's Dan- uh, on a different line. Well, that's yeah, Daniel, Daniel Rioli. Dan Rioli, Rioli, like he's yeah. only like he's he's, he's a twenty-seven year old yeah. halfback who's who's a very good user. Yep. Like I, I'm just you know you're talking about someone who's hypothetically hypothetically yes. is, is that is is that yeah. what you do? Maybe you maybe take maybe with some pick swaps I would take that. Yeah. As well. Yeah. Because because uh, it, it's a thing we do. Uh, we unless we're planning on taking Kako with our first pick, pick which I don't think we would because that's stupid. Uh, we need more picks. So mm-hmm. you know I'm expecting a shield to go for a stack of picks, yeah. yep. essentially, just so we can get the points that we yep. need to get the job done. So, yeah, it's a, it's an interesting one. We do love the old silly season. Who has more value out of Silas and Hobbs on a train table, do you think? Um, I think Sardis. Yeah. Because he's, he's got younger. uncapped potential yep. yeah. and yeah. clubs might think that they can develop him. Yep. Whereas Hobbs, I think he's a bit more exposed and you sort of know what you're going to get. Still think he's a serviceable player, but I think... If you're at the bargaining table, mm. you could spruce up Sardis just not being able to crack into our midfield. Yep. Um, I said this to Herb on his, his stream the other night. And I asked you guys this question. How do we win the trade window without Dodoro? Because he's a 20-year undefeated trade champion, as we know. So how do we do it without him? That's the, that's the tough question to end on. Yeah. <laughs> Very tough. <laughs> I think we'll do a good, good shout of it, hopefully. It's all smoke and mirrors. It has all been smoke and mirrors. I know you're saying that tongue in cheek, but it was all smoke and mirrors anyway. Mm. We felt like we won the trade window every year and then it never played out that well because our mm. team's still where we are. Well, yeah. the, old, the old media machine got rolling, didn't they? Yeah, in that's the, right. Uh, the draft period. Right, yeah, you're right. You're exactly right. Um, so just 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 letting you know, Joel. <laughs> oh, there you go. It's a media machine. Um, so how many... Okay, so I'll just check. How many days... This is great content right here. We're en- ending ending on a high. All right, forty two days until the trade window opens, boys. So okay. countdown begins. Get the calendars Woo-hoo! out. Yep. Woo-hoo! Speaking of, <laughs> yeah, always a fun topic of discussion. Trade targets. Anyone that has, I mean, interested I'd, you? Any rumors you've heard? Like I'd like Perryman, but mm. I feel like the Hawks are probably in the front running for him. Yeah. Um, I know that Jesse spoke to David Zeta, who said we're also we'd be looking. at uh, Isaac Cumming, who mm. very injury pr- prone, but if it's a replacement for Jake Kelly, I'll take it. Mm. Um, I mean, if Christian Petrarca wants to come to the Dons, why not? <laughs> why yeah. not? Yeah, Peter Wright, straight swap, fair deal yeah, for me. Yeah, that's yeah. an absolute fair deal for mine. Um, I actually don't know. I mean, Daniel Rioli, I'd love Daniel Rioli. I think yep. he'd be an awesome player for us. Like he's not too old. He's experienced at the absolute pinnacle of the game, mm. and he's he's a very good user of the footy, and he plays in a position where we clearly lack mm. talent. Dan Houston as well. Dan Houston, mold. yeah. I think the the issue with again the kind, of, the kind of the issue with both of them is that you're you're looking at giving out draft capital, mm. and I just I'm I'm, I'm feeling the belief like with last season where they played well and played the free agency market well, we are just not in a position to be coughing up big picks for players no. because yep. we've just got so many holes. Yeah, I think well from all reports, Gold Coast look like they're going to offer their pick five for Dan Rioli. So if you're Richmond, okay, I don't think you you're looking anywhere else anyway. Yeah, well, um, but one guy that came to mind, particularly after watching the game on the weekend, where we were just butchering the ball coming out of the back line, that you could potentially get pretty cheap is Caleb Daniel from the Dogs. I don't Ooh. know what your mm. thoughts are on. Yeah, I'd take him. Him mm. as a halfback distributor, but and you McCray, know, not, not give up much. McCray can't yeah. even crack their team, and he's just racking up forty touches in the VFL. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. but again, like, is are we just getting a plotter? Yeah, yeah. But Daniel's an interesting one. He's a good user of the footy. Is he quick? Is he is he because yeah, I think he's relatively yeah, yeah I feel relatively like quick, if, small, agile, yeah. good foot skills. Yeah, for some reason the Bulldogs just didn't see him as part of their structure. Mm. Although he played on the weekend, I'm pretty sure. Um, so it'd be interesting to see if they pick him for the first final. But yep. well, yeah, yeah, Tyler thought, Walker. Do you want Tyson Tyler Walker? Is <laughs> oh, <free> agent? No, <laughs> <laughs> that'd be it, wouldn't it? Yeah. Uh, hmm. Yeah, Caleb Daniel's an interesting one. I guess maybe I would take him. Uh, depending, yeah, but I don't know about a halfback. I guess. 
Mm. You know, is he a little too small to be playing on the half back line? Um, but yeah, interesting. He won a flag playing there. Too. Yeah, he yeah, did, did pretty well. I'm looking. I'm looking at the free agents. I mean, some of these guys could be signed. Um, is he all Australian? Brandon, Caleb Daniel. Pretty sure he was. Yeah, he Brandon was. Parfitt, Gary Rowan, Cole Jasney, Jed Buse. These are the ones that Geelong, um, Danger, um, Alex Sexton. Off the halfback flank. No. Nah. Mm. What about Levi Casbolt? We can get him. <laughs> Big Casbolt. That'd be right. Yep. <laughs> um, gee, there's not a lot of talent. Nick Haynes, he's he's, he's getting on, but he, yeah. he, he used to be really good for he's, the yeah, Giants. He's, he's 31 or 32. I feel like he might yeah. be an asset for us. What, what about, what about a, a crafty Chad Wingard from the Hawks? He's a free agent. I know. He's, he's already injury prone and yeah. he hasn't come to the hangar yet. So yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> he's a yeah, good bloke. Um... Let's see. Melbourne's yeah. free agents. No, nothing there. Uh, yeah, not from a free agent. I feel like there's no retired. one that's jumped out. All these guys retired. Harley Reid next year. That's Harley what we Reed want. next year. <laughs> Brandon Zerk Thatcher? No. Um, Massimo <laughs> Dan Brosio? Uh, uh, yeah. Fucking hell. Anyway. I reckon... Uh, I, I think, yeah, that, that's a distributor off half-back oh that'd go right, wouldn't it? Hey? Yeah, wouldn't he be great? Mm. Oh, my Lord. Wouldn't he be great, guys? Wouldn't he be, wouldn't he be great? Let's put that on Dodo. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's. Um, well, on that note, fellas, I think that's going to wrap us up for an evening. Mm. It's been an absolute pleasure to be with you tonight. Now, if you're listening to this or you're watching this and you're wondering where is your Essendon content going to come for the next <laughs> several months because I'm sure you're all frothing at the bit for Don's content. Well, have no fear. AFLW is here mm. and the Sash W is kicking off this week. They'll be recording tomorrow night. I'm not sure when the pod's going to come live. It'll probably be Wednesday or Thursday. They've got a couple of interviews with some players from earlier on, but a couple of weeks ago that they did, um, and that'll be an absolute cracking podcast. So uh, Courtney, Ari, and Jordy will be in the studio every week throughout the AFLW season. So if you want to get around a team who might actually have some <laughs> success, I feel, yep. like, the, I feel, yep. I feel, like, I feel like the, the W is the place, the place to be. Um, and then we'll probably pop up here and there throughout the next couple of months whenever there's some news or something to talk about. You know, I might make a video or whatever when I can feel like it. Um, James, some final thoughts from you, mate? Oh, thanks for you. It's been good fun coming in here despite on field not always going well. It's always good to come in here and have a laugh and shout out to all the Sash listeners, particularly those that take the time to uh, send in the hot takes and also to those who seemingly get in a studio and start recording. Uh, mm-hmm. I particularly enjoyed the... Uh, the musical editions this year. They were mm. uh, the steady improver uh, amongst some other things going the other way. So, mm. yeah, thanks for the year and, uh, yeah, thanks to the listeners. Joel? Yeah, it was uh, it's good to be here part of the year. Thanks to the listeners as well. It's a good shout. Uh, it's it's always awesome, um, yeah, getting the hot takes in and also, like, <laughs> it's, bump, it's great bumping into people at the footy as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's always really fun to just continue to talk shit about the Dons uh, with people <laughs> in real time. <laughs> Um, I mean, we're here again, I guess, is mm. kind of my final note. Um, and uh, I will still be going to the footy, um, but before I give the club my money, <laughs> <laughs> I want to see some uh, on-field change. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping... I, I don't want to get sucked in in pre-season again yeah. about how good we're going to be. But, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. It was, thanks for the year as well, Rob. No, it's a, that's okay. Um, thanks, everyone, who supported the show throughout the year. Thanks, of course, to... All of our premium members. Uh, thanks, of course, to our sponsors. Uh, we are, of course, still sponsored by Waxit for another week. So, boys, Father's Day is literally this weekend. Mm. So, if you haven't got your dad something, go get him some car care products from Waxit because yep. they're absolute world class, and that's where you, that's where you need to be. Uh, but thanks everyone for watching on YouTube. Thanks everyone for listening um, wherever you listen to your podcast. Thanks everyone again. Like you said, Joel, people who come say hi to us at the footy. It's always a Nice to have a chat with people, uh, whether we be in a good mood or a bad mood. Uh, it is it is always or good. Or blind or not blind. <laughs> yeah. Blind or not blind. Um, thanks to people who send in hot takes, but particularly those people who send them in every week and don't always get played. Um, but I think I think for them, it's just getting it off their chest. Yeah. You know, but I Therapy. Do, I do listen to them all. I do listen to them all on a Monday. Um, but I'm yeah very much looking forward to having my Monday nights and Thursday <laughs> nights free, uh, as is my partner who has to look after our son when mm. I'm not there. So... Uh, that'll be good. But, um, boys, I, I think it's only fitting that we just listen to that song again yes, to end the show because it really was that that good. So, thanks, everyone. We love you all. Until next time, go Plants. Thanks. 